six days before the Passover, when the Lord came into the city of Jerusalem, the children ran to meet him. Their hands they carried palm branches, and with a loud voice they cried out, Hosanna in the highest! Blessed are you who have come in your abundant mercy. O gates, lift high your heads, grow high ancient doors. Let him enter the King of glory. Who is this King of glory? He, the Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you who have come in your abundant mercy. And so we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. I'd like to uh, welcome you all uh, who are following this uh, Mass uh, from near and far. I trust that you have uh, had a uh, restful evening after the extra hour of sleep we had last night. Um, today is the uh, Palm Option Sunday. So we accompany our Lord um, in his entrance to the holy city, Jerusalem. And we join him in his suffering, in his passion, in his death. And as St. Paul reminds us, doing so, we hope to join with him in his resurrection. It's the holiest uh, week in our Christian calendar. And may we grow in our discipleship of fidelity with Christ. And so coming together as God's family, we now pause and acknowledge our sins, our sins that contribute to not just the suffering, the passion of Jesus 2,000 years ago, but even the ongoing passion um, in our um, brothers and sisters who are in need, who are um, being afflicted. Lord Jesus, though you were God eternally, you did not deem divinity to be great, but emptied yourself and became one of us. Lord, have mercy. You humbled yourself even more by accepting death, death on the cross. Christ, have mercy. For this perfect obedience, you were raised on high. You became King of kings and Lord of lords. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to God, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross. Graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Prophet Isaiah. The Lord has given me a disciple's tongue, so that I may know how to reply to the weary. He provides me with speech. Each morning he wakes me to hear, to listen like a disciple. The Lord has opened my ear. For my part, I made no resistance, neither did I turn away. I offered my back to those who struck me, my cheeks to those who tore at my beard. 
I did not cover my face against insult and spittle. The Lord comes to my help so that I am untouched by the insults. So too, I set my face like flint. I know I shall not be shamed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? All who see me deride me. They curl their lips, they toss their heads. He trusted in the Lord, let him save him. Let him release him, if this is his friend. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Many dogs have surrounded me. A band of the wicked beset me. They tear holes in my hands and my feet. I cannot count every one of my things. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? They divide my clothing among them. They cast lots for my robe. O oh Lord, do not leave me alone. My strength, make haste to help me. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? I will tell of your name to my brethren and praise you where they are assembled. You who fear the Lord, give him praise. All sons of Jacob, give him glory. Revere him, Israel's sons. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. His state was divine. Yet Christ Jesus did not cling to his equality. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Ghost. But to the governor's complete amazement, he offered no reply to any of the charges. At festival time, it was the governor's practice to release a prisoner for the people, anyone they chose. Now, there was at that time a notorious prisoner whose name was Barabbas. So when the crowd gathered, Pilate said to them, Which do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? For Pilate knew it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. Now as he was seated in the chair of judgment, his wife sent him a message. 
have nothing to do with that man. I have been upset all day by a dream I had about him. The chief priests and the elders, however, had persuaded the crowd to demand the release of Barabbas and the execution of Jesus. So when the governor spoke and asked them, which of the two do you want me to release for you? They said, Barabbas. But in that case, Pilate said to them, What am I to do with Jesus who is called Christ? And they all said, Let him be crucified. Why, he asked, What harm has he done? But they shouted all the loud, Let him be crucified. Then Pilate saw that he was making no impression, and that in fact a riot was imminent. So he took some water, washed his hands in front of the crowd, and said, I am innocent of this man's blood. It is your concern. And the people, to a man, shouted back, His blood be upon us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas for them. He ordered Jesus to be first scourged and then handed over to be crucified. The governor's soldiers took Jesus with them into the praetorium and collected the whole cohort around him. Then they stripped him and made him wear a scarlet cloak. Having twisted some thorns into a crown, they put this on his head and placed a reed in his right hand. To make fun of him, they knelt to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head with it. And when they had finished making him, they took three days. Then save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. The chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him in the same way. He saved others. They said, he cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now and we will believe in him. He put his trust in God. Now let God rescue him if he wants him. For he did say, I am the Son of God. Even the robbers who were crucified with him taunted him in the same way. From the sixth hour, there was darkness of all land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you deserted me? When some of those who stood there heard this, they said, The man is calling on Elijah. And one of them quickly ran to get a sponge, which he dipped in vinegar, and putting it on a reed, gave to him to drink. Wait, said the rest of them, and see if Elijah will come to serve him. But Jesus again crying out in a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Let us um, bow or kneel for a moment to commemorate the death of Jesus. At that, the veil of the temple was torn in two, from top to bottom. The earth quaked, the rocks were split, the tombs opened, and the bodies of many holy men rose from dead. And these, after his resurrection, came out of the tombs, entered the holy city, and appeared to a number of people. Meanwhile, the centurion, together with the others guarding Jesus, had seen the earthquake and all that was taking place, and they were terrified and said, This was God.
Dear friends, despite the disruption, chaos, anxiety, sorrow, and grief that it generates around the world, the coronavirus pandemic does have some silver lining. It has given the entire planet some breathing space, a much needed respite, albeit only temporarily. Why? Because we are seeing a significant reduction in carbon emissions into the atmosphere, the oceans, the rivers, and even our roads, our neighborhoods. Did you know that in Venice, Italy, a very popular tourist city, and I suspect in other um, over-visited cities around the world, the shutdown has not been altogether negative. In fact, it's been a real blessing for the water and the whole marine ecosystem. Less cruise ships, less planes, less cars, and even less human activities mean a reprieve and a jubilee for to replenish. So perhaps there is a lesson to learn the pandemic should be putting everything in perspective for us all. It should serve as a warning for us to make some adjustments, some fundamental changes to the way we live, the way we interact. We need a radical way of living that brings harmony and sustainability to all of life. We need to think and to act beyond self-interest, national interest, and even human interest to a more whole-of-life, inclusive approach. And this was precisely the appeal that Pope Francis made to the whole world as he appeared alone in that vast St. Peter's Square last week. He told us that the pandemic uncovers our false securities around which we construct our projects, our habits, and our priorities. When we carry these things on with little or no regard for the poor, the afflicted, and the ailing planet, the consequences can only be negative or even destructive. When we are out of touch with the natural world, when we are out of touch with our spiritual roots, we deprive ourselves of the antibodies we need to confront adversity, such as this time. So the crisis, in other words, is um, a symptom of deeper, deeper malaise. We have alienated ourselves from the God of life and love. We have become dull, dull to the cry of God's poor and the cry of God's creation, grown yearning for wholeness. And this uh, Palm or Passion Sunday is not just a remembrance of what happened to Jesus 2,000 years ago. It is also an opportunity for us to recognize our own sinfulness, our sinfulness on a certain or a level, which contributes to the suffering of the body of Christ. Now, at this very moment, in the poor, in the dispossessed, in the marginalized, and in our wounded mothers. Our entrance into this Holy Week calls us to join with the passion of the Lord, to renew our commitment to follow Him, to renew our commitment to heal and to transform our wounded humanity and broken earth. God in Christ is involved with the pain and the 
suffering of our world is involved in our quest for justice, peace, and the flourishing of all creation. The victory of peace is won by the power not of violence, of, not of brute force, but compassionate love and our solidarity with those who suffer. And this is why Christians and people of goodwill join around the world in the traditional march a rally for peace, for refugees, for those who are forgotten. So my friends, today, Passion Sunday galvanizes us into transformative action because Passion Sunday gives us a glimpse into the victory of love over hatred and life over death. The Passion uh, narrative that we have just listened to ends in um, a tragic note with the giving up of Christ's spirit and, and that piercing uh, sound, my God, my God, why have you deserted me? But even in that moment of total despair, God was present and the possibility of new life, the venue for life was already born in that moment. God's unflinching fidelity, unconditional love in Jesus would bring about the ultimate victory. And so we are encouraged by the fidelity, the unconditional love of Christ so that we can live more fully, more boldly, more for the sake of the kingdom. And doing so, we will lend to the triumph of love. May we follow the example of the suffering servant who shows us the way of disarming hatred, not with hatred, but with love. Evil, not with evil, but with goodness. Violence, not with violence, but with benevolence. Indifference, not with apathy, but with compassion. That's the way Jesus responded. That's the way our response shall also be. And may our commitment, our discipleship, transform the wounded humanity and our brokenness and that commitment be brought to fruition in accordance with God's plan in Christ. Now, I ask you to stand and renew our faith as we say the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Our Lord Jesus is merciful and loving. We never hesitate to bring him and through him our prayers to our loving God. For the leaders of our faith community. 
that they be strengthened and inspired to celebrate this holy weekend Easter with sincere fervour and understanding. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For our government leaders and all those in position of making decisions that affect the lives and futures of our families and communities. That they be filled with a spirit of wisdom, truth and love, so they can serve effectively with compassion and love. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For medical doctors, researchers, and healthcare workers, that their energy be renewed and sustain them physically and spiritually in this time. Bring your protection upon them and provide them with the necessary resources. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For families adjusting to new ways of life during this time. That they be guided in their new realities and give them the grace of kindness, encouragement and love so that families may draw closer to each other and to you. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For those around the world inflicted by the coronavirus, May they experience the compassion of Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For the deceased. That they be united in the death of Jesus so as to share his resurrection to new life. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. God of life and love, listen to our humble prayers. May this time of um, restrictions be a time for us to deepen our interior life, to replenish our spiritual self, to grow with you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have the bread we offer you, which earth has given human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mixing of this water and wine, may we come to share in the life of Christ, who humble himself to share our human life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. We ask you to receive us and be pleased with this sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from all my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all this holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for in the innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so, with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth full of your glory. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you ever cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the bring, and broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We the death of our Lord and profess the resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her blessed spouse, the Apostles, the glorious martyrs, St. Patrick, St. Mary of the Cross, MacKillop, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Francis, our Pope, me, you and worthy 
the, the other bishops, the clergy, and the entire people, you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world to our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. With the trust of the suffering servant, let us uh, pray that uh, God's will may be accomplished in and through us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, all we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom. O oh Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your friends, the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, Jesus, who faithfully and courageously went to the cross. Happy are those who follow in his footsteps. Happy are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus. Loved you.